So we just defined the method of moments estimator formally. Now let's apply it to some examples. We're gonna start with a simple example here just to help fix ideas and then look at maybe a, 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 more, a more realistic example that we would encounter in, in an econometrics application. So let's go back to that intuitive example that we started with. Uh, suppose we have five data points from a population, five, 10, nine, 14, seven, and we wanna know the mean of, this popul of the population. Let's suppose that we'd have no clue what kind of distribution these data were drawn from. We don't know, is it normal? Is it exponential? Poisson, log normal, who knows? So we don't wanna make a distributional assumption and use maximum likelihood. Instead, we're going to use the definition of a population mean to construct a population moment condition. So if Y is IID with mean mu, then in expectation, y should equal mu. We, are, we saw that a couple times already now. So that's going to give us the simple moment condition in expectation y minus mu equals zero. If in expectation y equals mu, we can just mu, move mu inside the expectation and the difference here in expectation equals zero. And let's just, let, let's just make sure we understand why this is a moment condition. It's a function of data y in parameter mu, that in expectation equals zero. That's kind of simply what a population moment condition is. Of course, we don't observe the population. We only observe a sample. And so what we do with the method of moments estimator is to replace that population expectation in our moment condition with its sample analog, the sample mean. So instead of thinking about the population and expectation, we look at our sample on average. I think there's, there's some intuitive appeal, appeal here. If something is supposed to hold an expectation in the population, if we take a random sample from that population, the same thing should hold on average. And then we define our method of moments estimator as the parameter that solves that equation or system of equations. In this case, we just have one moment and one parameter. So we just have one equation to solve, but we're gonna call that method of moments estimator that solves this equation mu hat. So then we can just do some manipulation here and reformulate this and say that mu hat equals one over N times the sum of our Y's. That's just the sample mean. So we've actually come out with a really kind of intuitive result here that the GMM estimator for the population mean is simply our sample mean. And so if we plug in our numbers here, it ends up being nine. So if we wanted to know the mean of the population from which our data are drawn, we can just find the mean of our sample. And that is going to be a consistent estimate of the population mean. But that's kind of a simple example. Look at, let's look at something a little more maybe realistic for a, an econometrics application. And let's look at the OLS regression. It turns out the OLS regression estimator is actually a special case of a method of moments estimator. So let's consider just the general OLS regression model. Y, uh, y sub i, so some outcome observation, is a linear combination of parameters beta and some data x plus an idiosyncratic term error, uh, idiosyncratic error term epsilon. And, you know, kind of makes it clear with this representation, but beta and x have to have the same dimensionality. We're going to say that there are k parameters in beta and k variables in x. Well, one of the assumptions of the OLS model is that the error term, term epsilon is orthogonal to the data every one of our variables uh, is orthogonal to epsilon. So to write that down mathematically, what that means is that in expectation, each one of our x's times epsilon equals zero, in expectation. And so if we have k x's here, then we're actually gonna have k moment conditions. We're gonna say in expectation, you know, x1 times epsilon equals zero, in expectation, x2 times epsilon equals zero, and so on. Now let's note, we can actually rewrite epsilon 
epsilon is like our, it, it, since it's our error term, we can rewrite it as y minus this linear combination of beta and x. So let's replace epsilon in this expression with y minus beta times x. And this is what we end up with, the last equation here at the bottom of the slide. Let's look at what this is. Inside the bracket, we've got x, and remember we have k of these x's, times this, uh, uh, we can think of this as the error term or like our econometric residual. We think in expectation that thing equals zero. Let's look at this. This is gonna be, inside the bracket here, this is a function of data, our x's and our y's, and a function of parameters, beta, and in expectation, this thing equals zero. So those are moment conditions, population moment conditions. And because we have k x's, we can think of this as actually being like a, a vector of k population moment conditions, and each one of them equals zero in expectation. So once again, we can't just directly calculate these parameters because we don't observe the full population, but we do observe a sample. So what we can do is replace those, those population expectations with sample means. And we can say, if we think this orthogonality holds in expectation for the population, then we would expect it to hold on average in our sample. So we're gonna end up with K equations based on our data that are functions of K parameters, beta. And we're gonna say that our method of moments estimator beta hat is the set of parameters that solves that system of K equations and K unknown parameters. And in this case, we can actually come up with a closed form expression for, for beta hat. Uh, if we solve this system of K equations for K unknown parameters, we get the following expression for beta hat, which uh, if you're, if you're familiar with the OLS uh, regression estimator, this is just the traditional OLS estimator. This is one way to express it. And so normally we think about formulating the OLS uh, regression estimator as the set of parameters that minimize the sum of squared error. But in this case, we've also formulated it as the set of parameters that achieve orthogonality between our data and our error term and gotten to the exact same estimator. So we're gonna say that OLS is a special case of, of GMM and we got to exactly that same OLS estimator using this entirely different method to get there. Another example is that we can actually formulate or kind of motivate maximum likelihood estimation as being a special case of method of moments. So in general, we don't have to make a distributional assumption with, G, with GMM or method of moments, but let's suppose for a second that we could, that, that we know, we think we know the distribution. So we wanna make that assumption. So we're gonna say that a random variable Y has this, has some conditional density. We're not, you know, we're just gonna leave it general and say that it's represented by F then if we were doing maximum likelihood, we could use that F uh, conditional density to construct a log likelihood function of theta conditional on our Y's and X's. Uh, we did this a couple weeks ago, so I'm not gonna go through the math, but we end up with our log likelihood function being a function of, of those conditional densities that we assumed. And then we want, in maximum likelihood, we wanna maximize that log likelihood function. Well, when we maximize the log likelihood function, that gives us, uh, gives us some first order conditions. The derivative of the log likelihood function with respect to each parameter equals zero. So if we have k parameters, we're gonna end up with k equations here, k different derivatives, uh, and each one is gonna equal zero. We could similarly write down though that it's gonna be the derivative of the log of the conditional density function that equals zero. Because of, the, because of the equality of the log likelihood and the, the, log, the, the sum of the logs of conditional density, we can just take the derivative for either one and that first order condition should hold for either one. Okay, so if we start from these 
knowing that these, the sum of derivatives of the log of the conditional density, that's kind of a mouthful, but, but on the last slide, we showed this expression should be true. Let's divide by n. And we get this expression here. Now, what does this look like? We're dividing by n, summing over all observations, and we have something that's a function of data and parameters that equals zero. We have a function of data and parameters that on average in our sample equals zero. That's a sample moment condition. That's exactly what we need to solve for a method of moments estimator. So we have K of these sample moment conditions, K parameters. So if we solved for the parameters that, uh, that, that you know, made, this, uh, made these conditions hold, we'd get something that we would, could think of as a method of moments estimator. But also we can get to this exact same place by thinking through the steps of the maximum likelihood estimator. So it turns out that these K sample moments here, we could view those as the empirical analogs of K population moment conditions. We're kind of doing this backwards. On the last two examples, we went from population expectation to sample average. Here, we're gonna do it the opposite way and say that what we've created here, the, these expressions we've constructed are the sample analogs of these population moment conditions. And so we could get to the maximum likelihood estimator by making a distributional assumption and then solving using the method of moments estimation with these population moment conditions right here. And so we're going to say that maximum, the maximum likelihood estimator can actually be motivated as a special case of the method of moments estimator with these specific population moments right here. So those are some examples. I hope they help to fix ideas. Um, in the next video, we're going to generalize things a little bit and talk instead about the generalized method of moments estimator. Uh, we're gonna define that in the next video and then in the, the video after that, go through some another example of GMM as opposed to method of moments.